Hello everyone, welcome back. In uh, today's demo, we will see how to use um, Golang's concurrency feature. So concurrency is one of the important features uh, which makes the language very powerful. So it, uh, it, the concurrency is actually built into the language itself. So you can run multiple things at the same time. But before I show you any code, I would strongly encourage you to watch this uh, video by Rob Pike, which talks about concurrency and um, the other details. So let's continue where we left off. So let's copy this program. If you remember in the last video, um, this scanning was happening in a sequence. So it was going from one, it was happening from one and then it was going to two, three, four and the program uh, wasn't even able to complete. So let's try to tweak the program and make it run faster. So let's paste it. So let's do some uh, refactoring and let's write a function um, and so that way you will know how to uh, implement a function within Golang. So writing a function is pretty simple. So you you'd use the keyword func and then the name of the function and the parameters that this function will accept. So let's have two function, uh, param two parameters for this function. One will be a string, which will be the IP address. And then we'll have a port and we'll use that as an integer. So this function is not going to be returning any uh, values, but uh, if it does return, you can put the return values here. So let's cut out these few lines and then we can cut it out and then we can paste it here. So we are trying to, like I said, refactor and put all the things in a different function. And we can call this function using scan and we need the port, uh, IP address, which is IP comma port. So IP is something we got from the user and the port is something which get from the loop. So this will, uh, this function will be called uh, 65,000 uh, times. I don't think we need to make any more changes. So let's run it and make sure it works like the last time. Okay, so this is good. So I think we refactored. Um, we did a good job refactoring and everything is running as usual. But again, this program is running very slowly and it's only up to like 600 ports. And um, like I said, it will take anywhere from um, 10 to 15 minutes for this to complete. So let's stop this. And uh, so the go, um, I mean, instead of going to the internals, I will tell you how to do a, a concurrent function. So it is very, very simple in Golang. All we have to do is use the keyword called go in front of the functions. So when you do this, each of this call, it's going to be in a, its own concurrent process. So it is, uh, think of it as a, a thread at this time, uh, but it is not equivalent to a thread. Uh, but for, for simplicity's sake, uh, let's assume that each one is a different thread. But it is uh, more lightweight than a thread and it runs faster. And um, so so this is like having a 65,000 concurrent processes, right? So that is all it takes to create a Go concurrent function. So imagine, compare this to, with other languages uh, where you have to implement a lot of different libraries and um, it, it gets a lot complicated. Uh, but Golang, it's, it's pretty simple to uh, do a concurrent uh, process. So let's see how this works. Um, so let's scan it again. There's going to be a problem with this approach, but I'll show you what that is in a second. Okay, so now it, it did find that if the program ran quickly and it did find a few open ports and I mean, guess, uh, see how fast it was able to run and um, but it exited, right? So the problem with the uh, concurrency model is since we have 65,000 concurrent processes 
as soon as it spawns everything and it comes to this line right here the program terminates because this is the main function and um, it cannot wait until everything is done so we need to have some kind of uh, synchronization um, thing to tell the program to wait till everything completes and um, like I said I don't want to go into the details at this time um, all you have to do is simple things and um, you can do the same for your programs at this time and uh, once we get along with the series we will uh, learn how to deal with um, like sh shared data and other complex data structures but for now all you have to do is uh, create a, a variable called a variable of type sync dot weight group and it, you define it like this so you just define a variable and you can give any name you want like wg and then you, it's it's of type weight group so this is the type so you, um so this is like um, a queue so you tell them how many things are there in the queue and then you ask the program to wait till everything is complete so now the next stage is to say how, how long it has to wait since we have 65,000 um, in the list, let's go and add that to this variable. So all you have to do is wg say add, and you can say 65535, okay? And then in the end, after the for loop, you're going to tell the sync variable to wait. So basically you're, you're adding and telling it that, hey, there is 65,000 thing entries in this uh, particular, um, there are 65,000 Go processes, and the wait statement is saying please wait for it to complete but how does the go program know that it's done again it's very simple as soon as you're done with each of this function you can you can you can call wg.done okay so when you say done so when let's say the first port is called and it it, it is done with this and then it signals this particular queue to say, hey, I'm, I'm done. So decrement me by one. So each of the different Go functions, again, there are 65,000 running at the same time. Um, this is not a good design, uh, but I'm just showing you the power of Golang. Uh, please do not use um, this many Go, um, Go routines uh, in your program. Um, but again, you will be learning a lot of uh, uh, patterns later on. Uh, but for now, uh, for simplicity's sake, uh, assume that we are spawning 65,000 uh, go routines and after each one is done we are signaling to decrement by one so each time everything is done this will decrement by one so every, when very, everything is done uh, the program is going to terminate so let's see how this one works so we have an error so I think it is uh, W, it's capital I think that will take care of that error okay so I think we're good so let's do this and let's start a, a stopwatch or something to see how long this takes right so last time it was going in sequence and this one uh, this time we're doing everything concurrently Okay, I'm going to press the enter button. So this is a lot faster than last time. I think the, uh, the program is almost done. So let's, let's run it one more time to get a feel for it. So let's run it. Okay, I think it's uh, taking the same amount of time to complete. So this uh, a pro simple program demonstrates how um, easy enough it is to create a Go routine, which again is a different um, thread. Uh, it's, it's loosely based on a thread, uh, but in reality it's not a thread. Uh, but you can see how simple it is to implement. Just create a function and uh, put the keyword called Go and each one of this function is a different 
function or I mean different call by itself or it's running in concurrent concurrently. 